Welcome back. Today we will talk about the low level details of the data node. And the best way to identify what's going on the data node is try to do some performance test. So as a reminder, the current architecture of the Ozone or the write path is something like this. So this is the client, it connects to the Ozone Manager, so a new key will be created. Ozone Manager connects to the Storage Container Manager to allocate the real block space. And if there is a block which is written to the client, the client will connect to the data node, especially it will connect to the Redis, which is, which is a Raft protocol implementation, so there is a leader, and it will connect to the leader, and the leader will distributed the request and at the end of the day it will be dispatched to a, a described thread and it will be it will write to the disk so how can we test it so we have an overall performance number from here but today one of uh, my colleagues just asked that what about increasing some rocksdb specific thread here does it help or not well, we can measure the RocksDB, but the big question is that is the data node can be more fast with this change or we have some other problems, so it doesn't matter. So it would be great to, to measure just this part with the, all of the other things. So I would like to just uh, remove all of the others from the picture. And here I have a question that what should I test this one? The leader or one follower. I would prefer one follower today because you know that the leader I need to mock all of these calls which, which which can be can be harder. So so let's start with a follower and let's delete all of the leader from the picture. So we have two kind of uh, communications. One is the client or actually not the client, the leader connects to the follower. So I need to simulate a leader somehow. And the other one is that the data node connects to the storage container manager to get some information. But I wouldn't like to have any storage container manager. I would like to test just with this data node. And that's the task for, for this video. So in Ozone, we have a load test tool which called Ozone Freon. And you can just start it, and there are a lot of other subcommands, ozone freon, random key generator, and a lot of other type of load generator. There are a lot of parameters, but today we will check only one subcommand, this uh, so-called uh, isolated follower generator. And maybe it's easier just to start in with the IDE. So there was a other video earlier that how can you start Ozone from the IntelliJ and it can be a very good approach today because I would like to just start one data node right so I can just uh, initialize all of the runners there is a command which if you execute you will have all of these runners check the previous video and I can start the data node and well there are two problems here one uh, is okay actually we have no storage container manager so it's just uh, complaining that's not a big problem because i can just turn off the uh, log file so let's say log 4j logger dot org apache hadoop ipc and i'm interested only about the errors so no storage container manager no problem at all Okay, the the other problem actually, the the raft server itself. So the way how does it work uh, in Ozone that the data node has a very generic raft server, and this raft server is started only after the initial heartbeat. So there is an initial registration with the SCM and the SCM, if the SCM agrees that they are friend and part of the same cluster, then a Redis 
server will be started here. And after the Redis server is started, the SCM in the response will ask the data node to start different kind of Redis rings, which can be multiple. So this can be one Redis ring, let's say this is the blue one, and this should be initialized in all of the members. And But there could be another Redis ring configuration with other data nodes. This is the so-called multiraft and this can be added to the other data nodes and there could be an other synchronization. But let's start with just one. So the two things what I need. First, I need to start the empty Redis server and after that, I need to register this uh, blue one. Fortunately, in the, in the HDDS data node service, which is the data node, there is a Oh, you can see this code path. So if something, a system environment variable is equals follower, then the Redis server will be started independent from the storage core internal manager state. So this is exactly what I need. So everything is started at the end. The Redis here will be started. It doesn't matter if the SCM is, is working or not. So let's try to add this to the an environment variables. So let's move this one to here. And this should be follower. And I would like to do a, an other logging here. Let's say log 4j logger or Apache uh, Redis. And let's turn it to debug. By the way, this log4j is part of the Hadoop Ozone slash dev support slash IntelliJ. So all of the configurations and loggers are used from here for all of the runner configuration. If you check the Freon or the data node runner, here you can see that Hadoop Ozone dev support in the, oh, the log4j properties is configured to be used from there. And okay, this is a data node there, but there should be ah yes, this the ozone site the configuration is read from there. So I modify the, the configuration, so I have a Redis debug log, no SCM log, and I added this magic environment variable. So now I can start the data node and the Redis server will be started inside the data node. So Okay, so here you can see that I have a server ID. The problem is that this is just one server and I need to initialize with Redis groups inside the server. There could be multiple groups and usually it's initialized as a response of the uh, SCM uh, return, heartbeat uh, return value. But I would like to just start. If there is a Redis server, there is an RPC endpoint. And this is the point when I can start with the Freon. So I have an other Freon runner. And let's start first with any argument. This is the only argument to use the same configuration, nothing more. So let's start Freon. And you can see that I have a lot of type of tests, a lot of different type of tests. And today we would like to talk about this follower open log gen generator. It's not a very nice name, but I can just use it. So let's start with this one. Okay, I need to specify the rough server ID, but I have the rough server ID, so it's uh, very easy to specify. So let's specify it. And let's say that I have a rough server ID just to be sure that this one. Okay. Oh, this test should be executed from one thread. Usually all of the Freon tests are executed from multiple threads, but this is a very specific uh, test which initializes the data node. So I need just one thread so I can define the one thread. But before continue this uh, execution, Let's understand why do we need this uh, rough server ID in the client side. So let's check the, the code of the Freon test itself. So this is the, the 
follower open load generator and here we have a lot of other type of uh, parameters to test with different type, different type of messages and the real test is somewhere here we are just uh, creating clients and so on so here we have an initialization phase and this is the configure group so this is the the time when this blue wrapped group is added to this Redis. So I this Redis is started with the environment variable and I would like to initialize the wrapped group. And this is the place where I need the identifier of this wrapped. So in this wrapped server, I would like to uh, create a new group. Actually, when I create a new group, I need a few servers. So you can see that this is the code which initialized the the new wrapped group and what I do here is just uh, I'm configuring current data node server address and a fake leader so I will be the, the leader back to this picture so what I'm doing here is that instead of the real reader I'm just trying to behave like a leader from here that's the main idea and I don't need this one right because instead of the responses I'm just calling the Redis API manually so let's go back to the code so here I'm I can initialize the wrapped group server and after the initialization so that this is the wrapped group uh, I need a vote so I would like to be the leader and so I should be voted the only problem is that the uh, timeout so in Raft, if there is no heartbeat from the from the leader and from the leader, then this threat is very soon will be a candidate and try to create a new leader election. But I would like to avoid this one. This should be a, a follower all the time. So the easiest way to do this is just uh, configure the the heartbeat timeout. So let's say it's two days. So if there is no heartbeat for two days, it can be a leader. But until that, it shouldn't be a leader. That's fine, right? Because I can fake the leader in the meantime. So in the meantime, I will send a vote request to this one. And this one will vote because this is the only request. So, okay, I can be the... Oh, is there any crown here? So I will be the, the leader. Oh. And I will... Say that, oh, I'm the leader, and if I'm the leader, I can send all of the heartbeats, the Redis heartbeats, the append log entries request to the Redis as fast as possible. And I can identify that what is the maximum possible number or number of requests which can uh, serve by this data node, right? This is, the, this is the game. I'm just testing this data node and I'm sending a lot of data inside of the heartbeats. So in the code side, this is uh, uh, something like this. So here I have the request vote. I'm sending as a test. I'm the test. So I'm sending a, a, a vote request to the real data node. The real data node will, will answer that, OK, you can be the leader. Oh, so if I'm the leader, I need to send a lot of app and log entries. The first one is just a, a very simple initial login tray which is empty and after that I will start with the real messages which will contain all of the 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 real message create app and log entry which will, will contain the real payload so the container request write chunk so this is the real data which will be added and there are some uh, flags to to limit the in-flight messages for example just to test different type of scenarios so let's start from the beginning this is my data node it's very important that when you start a, a new test uh, because this uh, after this initialization this state is persisted so if you don't know the current state of the data node the easiest way what you can do is just remove the data node one directory okay it's removed seems that i didn't start it earlier so i'm just starting the data node one i didn't have any initialized redis 
I need the Retis uh, ID, it seems to be this one. I can go to here, I can update the Retis server, and I can just start this one. Okay. Okay, so some state is there. You can see that since the group already exists in the map, I couldn't initialize, so I didn't delete something. So let's try to reset this one. This is the data. Ah, now I deleted it. So I can just restart the data node. I need the new group ID or the new server ID. It should something somewhere here. Ah, yes, this is the new rough server ID. I can go to the free one. I can modify it again. And okay, I copied it fully and I can start the free one. So it will initialize the rough. Ah, you can see I'm on, on debug level of the rough. So I just executed a, a lot of tests. You can see that this is the debug level of the Rattis. You can see all of the data. So a lot of hard speed has been sent and I can just check the overall. So it's not very fast actually. So this is the, uh, it's two requests per second actually, which is not very good, but this is my local machine. I had a lot of logs. And I think in one request I had multiple uh, chunk write requests. But this can be executed in a real environment. So just as a summary, what we did here that this guy, this was the Freon test, um, can behave like a leader. So what we need is just an environment variable to initialize an empty Redis server. Instead of this SCM heart, uh, heartbeat, I manually can create this uh, Redis ring and this guy will behave like a member of this Redis ring and it will request a, a vote to be the leader. I adjusted the leader timeout just to make sure it will uh, work. So it, if it's the leader, it can send a lot of messages to the Redis and I can measure the end-to-end -end performance, the data node. Not the end-to-end -end performance of the ozone, but just the isolated uh, data node. And after that, it can be used as a maximum number, which can be achieved with one data node, which means actually with one pipeline, a three data node set, but you can scale it up, up if it's not um, enough. So let's go back to here. Just as a summary, I modified this one and this one. And after that, I just started the data node. You can start it from Docker Compose, Kubernetes in any other way. And I just started this uh, follower app and log generator. Uh, actually, Ozon Freon follower app and log generator. And it's important that you need the server ID. You should copy it. And the other one, which is important, that it's easier to delete the previous data from the, from the data node. And actually, if I go to this directory, so this the previous data is here. So I just executed the, the test and you can see all of the data. So this is the Redis log here. This is the data node ID. These are the real data, which is persisted. These are the blocks. I needed two blocks and these are this is a RocksDB instance per container which contains all of these chunk layout settings and a few metadata and this is the version which can be used to to check if I have the good SCM connected so I have all of the data so it's executed so let's go back to here and at next time, we will try to cheat a data node leader, which is somewhat, somewhat more challenging because the data node leader will send out the Rattis heartbeat all the time. So we need to cheat somehow and, and mock the follower data nodes, but we will see it later.